Welcome everybody, my name is Tim Burris and today I want to show you the minimum steps required to add authentication to your .NET Core application using Azure Active Directory. I've created a brand new uh, .NET 6 web application and I've made no changes to it so this is what you get right out of the box and this is where we're going to start and the first thing we'll need to do is we'll just need to install a single NuGet package. So we'll manage our NuGet packages we'll browse and we'll paste in Microsoft identity .web.ui. so this this package will reference all the other packages that are needed so we just need to install this one guy has a bunch of stuff but this is Microsoft so you know this is kind of what you expect uh, <laughs> when you add a Microsoft NuGet package we'll accept all the terms so uh, this is the only package we'll need to install and then from here we're just going to add a few lines into our uh, startup well I guess the just the program in, in this application so I'm just going to paste in uh, a chunk of code uh, we're going to replace this add razor pages because we're going to include the authentication as part of that so I'm going to just highlight this I'm going to paste in the entire block I'm going to add some usings here uh, for some of the libraries Let's get all these guys fixed up. So here you can see we're just going to add the middleware for authentication. We are going to tell our controllers that we want to require authentication and we're going to tell our razor pages that we want to require authentication and this add identity UI by using this it means we're not going to have to create any web pages ourselves. Uh, all the entire authentication process will be handled uh, th through both Azure Active Directory and and that NuGet package. Uh, we could, of course, go through and configure some of this stuff and hook into some of our own pages and do all kinds of great stuff. But the purpose of this is the minimum steps required. So, uh, by using this uh, extension here, uh, we won't have to add any views or controllers to our application. So, along with with those we just need one other standard thing which is here before our authorization we just need to say that we want to use authentication so um, so we have this block of code up here and then we have use authentication and that's all the code changes that we're going to make um, for the for this demonstration one of the things that's happening in this initialization code is right here when we're adding this middleware this Microsoft identity we are passing in our builder configuration and this is so that uh, the NuGet package that we installed all that uh, identity stuff can get what it needs from the app settings so the uh, these are all the code changes we need and then we're going to jump over into the app settings so that we can set up the configuration that uh, the Microsoft's going to be expecting so open our app settings I'm going to paste in a block here uh, so we have our Azure AD, AD section here uh, instance this will be just to the Microsoft login URL uh, the domain tenant and client are what we're going to set up in Azure Active Directory in just a moment and then this callback path is uh, after you've signed in what do you expect to happen and this is pretty much what you'll see as, as the default you could make this really whatever you want it to be but uh, since we are not using any of our custom UI we're just letting uh, the, the built-in package handle the entire sign-in process we don't need to do anything we can just leave this URL and uh, if we in the future decide that after sign-in we want to do so, do do something special then uh, we, we could change this callback path okay so now that we have those settings we're gonna hop over into our actual Azure Active Directory and set up our application in there so I'm in Azure I'm gonna go to Active Directory and I'm going to set up an app here. Uh, I'm going to register an app, but I want to be clear that this doesn't mean your app needs to live in Azure. It doesn't mean it needs to be hosted in Azure. It can run locally, can run on-prem, can run wherever you want it, AWS, Azure, anywhere. Uh, but you will need to create a registration so that you can have an ID that you can use. So we're going to go, we're in our Active Directory. We're going to go to App Registrations. We're just going to go ahead and create a new registration and we'll we will call this our um, demo Azure AD and um, what we're gonna choose here is that um, that only people in this directory will be able to log in now 
Uh, this doesn't mean you have to have a chalklogic.com email address. It just means that you have to be invited to this Active Directory. Uh, so there are some other things you could do here. For example, you could say, uh, you could choose select this one, and this would mean really anyone with a Microsoft account would have access to log in. Uh, so it really depends on your needs. But for me, we're just going to go with this guy it means you either you have to be in my Active Directory or I have to invite you into my Active Directory. And here we're going to choose what happens after uh, after sign in. We are going to say that it's going to be a web. You know, this is going to be a web sign in. And after sign in, we are going to go. Let's see. Uh, let's see what our URL was. Let's run this guy. I didn't check to see what. So we are localhost 7044. So we're running on port 744. We're getting some errors here, and that's because I've added all this in, and I haven't actually configured the app settings yet. But uh, what we need is localhost 7044 to plug into our settings here. So this will be HTTPS localhost 7044, and then uh, that that path that we specified in our app settings, this guy right here. So these need to match up. Um, if you uh, if you want to allow multiple instances of this app, for example, maybe one running localhost, running one running in your test environment, and one running in your uh, production environment. If you wanted them all to use this same registration, then there's going to be a place later where we can add additional uh, URLs. So you can add as many of these redirects. But ultimately, when your app tries to authenticate, it needs to be in this list of redirect URIs. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So we clicked Create on that. It's created our new application. And these redirect URLs are what I was just referring to. You'll see that there is just this one. But here's where I would add my production and test URIs if I wanted them all to use the same uh, application for authenticating. We'll also need to select uh, these two tokens. Not going to jump into what all these settings are. We're just trying to get the minimum steps required to get authentication working. So for the NuGet package we're using and in ASP.NET Core, we're going to select both of these tokens and we will hit save. That's all we have to do for that. And now we just need to grab these IDs and use them over in our app settings. So the client ID, I'm just going to grab that. I'll go here in client ID. Grab the tenant ID or the directory ID. And then last but not least, we just need our domain. So that's for our the domain for our, our Active Directory. So in this case, we are using chalklogic.com. So that will be our domain. And really, those are all the steps. Um, we have configured our program. We have added our settings. And we've set up our app in Azure AD. So uh, in terms of who has access, when we are in our app here, we can come to this manage application and it creates what's called an enterprise application. Uh, so this is sort of a, a tier and this is part of what makes Azure kind of so complicated. It there's a lot of power here, but it, it also makes it a bit unintuitive. But we click on that and we come in to our enterprise application, which happens to have the same name. Uh, it was created for us automatically. In the users and groups section here, this is where we will add um, our user. But here we'll go ahead and add my account sign. And so now I'm in the list. I actually thought I was going to be there by default, but it uh, turns out uh, I wasn't. So added myself in. And uh, so you can just continue to add uh, additional users. Let's see if it works. So we'll close our app and we will just, we got everything in there. We're just going to rerun it. And it's going to ask us to sign in. Let's 
see if I can remember what my password is. I think it's all bullet points. Let's see. Yes, all bullet points. Okay, so uh, the, the first thing it's going to do, a lot of this stuff is configurable, but we're going with the, the least configuration necessary. And it's just saying, you know, do, do you want to allow access? Yes, we are. And now we're in. Now, to prove that, that it's actually working, I will run this again. But this time I will sign in with a, a valid Microsoft account, but not one, but one without access uh, to the domain. And no, we will not say signed in. And now we get uh, we get an error that this account uh, does not exist. So all this stuff is configurable. You could have this go to a different page. We're not getting into all that. If you just want to get uh, Azure Active Directory sign in working in your web application, uh, that's all you really need to do. You just need to install the NuGet package, add a little bit of code to the program, add some app settings, and then set your app up in Azure Active Directory. And that's it. You can push this out to any host and uh, sign in. You can control sign in uh, by adding accounts in your Azure Active Directory. I hope that you found this very minimal, super quick uh, demonstration useful and have a wonderful day.